Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Breaking Bitcoin Market Update here with your host, Justin Wise, lead analyst and senior mentor at CrackingCryptocurrency.com. Hope you're doing fantastic wherever you happen to be tuning into the show from. Coming to you on the heels of a highly volatile movement in the market, so we've got lots to talk about. It's an exciting day in the market, guys. We're going to talk about the warning signs that led up to this, how you could have caught this movement in the market, talk about the positions that we're putting on, and we're also going to talk about two important things, uh, the history of cash settled futures derivatives and their negative impact upon markets, both cryptocurrency and precious metals. Um, this coming to you with the news that Ledger X is vying to be the first physically settled Bitcoin futures platform out there. I think they're well positioned to be the first to get their license. This will just be an additional license on top of the licenses that they already have. Uh, Ledger X is more supportive of the ecosystem than something that we're going to see uh, from the CME and CBOE Bitcoin futures, which preceded the massive drop in Bitcoin's price valuation. Now we're going to get we're not going to get super tinfoil hatty with this. There's already a lot of content that has gone over this, but we're just going to talk about the difference between cash settled futures and physically delivered Bitcoin futures. We're also going to talk about the whale alert, the $10 million of USDT that was transferred to Bitfinex prior to the dump. And we're going to talk about this being a leading indicator of massive movements in the market when you see those. Now, specifically, there's lots of different whale alerts that you can be on the lookout for. Not every individual one is one that you're going to uh, make a move off of, but they are important, especially in a, in, in, in a space with as little liquidity as we see in cryptocurrency uh, to be a fantastic indicator of potential movement in the market, guys. We're also going to go over our traditional indicators and look at where they're telling us and what are the intraday trades, uh, what are the intraday opportunities today now that the volatility has played out. You guys know how it is in cryptocurrency sometimes, you know, a day of waiting for 15 minutes of volatility. So congratulations to everybody who was on the right side of the market. The XBT USD short from 5350 doing fantastic for us in the group. We'll talk about a couple other positions that we put on as well. Let's get into it, guys. All right, guys, let's start off with the primary news for today. And this is obviously Binance delisting BCHSV. This is really where the volatility began today for the intraday session. We have this news coming out about five hours ago from CZ of Binance tweeting it, obviously on Binance, tweeting it on Twitter, excuse me. And um, then, of course, the announcement here on the Binance platform as well that Binance will be delisting Bitcoin Cash SV. Obviously, this has been kind of a meme factory for the last few days. Uh, ever since, as as we know, Craig Wright, a notorious, notorious douchebag, uh, but really getting himself into some hot water on Twitter. Uh, really, I mean, there's there's so much wrong about BCHSV. Uh, if you had any doubts, if you had any doubts as to the validity or the legitimacy of Bitcoin Cash SV, um, let me just be the first person here to tell you that it is a garbage project. As far as I am concerned, uh, there has been there there was never any validity behind it, just as there was never any validity behind Bitcoin Cash. Uh, I, I da, 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 da. it's it's just awful, man. Uh, so for those of us who have been around for a while, uh, we're obviously aware of these things, especially especially individuals who fall into the realm of more Bitcoin maximalism or who have studied the history of Bitcoin. So uh, again, this is an open source space, uh, free. Um, you know, I, I fully support at a fundamental and ideological level, anybody wanting to go out and innovate and develop on their own. Uh, but as far as us, uh, as far as a project that is superior to Bitcoin that purports itself, you know, you have to understand that that we're human beings. And so we deal with psychology as well. It's not all just numbers on a chart. Again, a good interpretation of technical analysis is being to a being able to understand and visually represent human psychology uh, as it relates to price and what is something that human beings get extremely emotionally involved in and excited about and make a rational usually irrational decisions around it's about the price of an asset and you don't see this any more clearly than trading you can pick any asset any time frame and you're going to see the irrationality in the emotion the the emotions of traders guide their trading decisions. And again, just to hammer this point home, that is the purpose of building an if this, then that strategy that we talk about so frequently on this channel, on this platform, because you want to devise a trading system that takes the guesswork out, okay? Nine out of 10 individuals that go down the realm of thinking that they're just going to subjectively determine when to go long or go short, uh, all that falls into the realm of being undisciplined and unprepared to trade the correct way. 
you're not going to, if you are subjectively interpreting where you think price is going to go, you are going to incur losses uh, nine out of 10 times. I would say 99 out of 100, probably the equation is higher than that. Uh, the, the common number that is thrown around is that, you know, uh, 99 out of, a, or 90, nine, or nine, 90% of traders lose money. It's probably closer to 99%. That 9% of traders are just individuals who end up having some skill uh, in the in in the business in the first place, in the ability to predict price, and some people just do have a natural talent and knack for predicting turning points in the market or for predicting good areas to enter, or they're just darn lucky. You are going to have those individuals, but that nine percent, as differentiated from the one percent of traders that actually do make money and can make this a sustainable career, the difference between that nine percent and the one percent is an if this then that strategy. Is the ability to have a disciplined, strategic method of entering and exiting positions, position sizing, dealing with losses, managing underwater positions, and learning how to let winners run and cutting losers early. It's all about having a strategy, about keeping a trade journal and keeping and, and taking this seriously as a profession, even if you are doing it as a hobby. You would not realistically expect success in anything that you would attempt to do. If you try to go on American Ninja Warrior or regular Ninja Warrior, for those of you tuning in across the way across the pond, uh, <laughs> On the other side of the pond, um, you know that if you don't practice and if you are not physically fit and skilled and dexterous, you are not going to do very well uh, in American Ninja Warrior. You're just not going to. You cannot show up and expect to just be able to wing it. All right. There are just so many things in life. Uh, and, and this is a big problem that I have with um, with kind of the mentality uh, that is promoted and talked about today, because I think that our youth are really being taught that, uh, you know, and this, and, and again, I'm not making a blanket statement against any genre or type of music. I'm mostly talking about the overall culture uh, that we find ourselves immersed in for the, for the younger generations and the millennials. Uh, it, it's all, it seems to per portray, it seems to purport this kind of idea that you're either fantastic or you just suck. And some people are just naturally born amazing. And some people are just naturally born sucky. And I can tell you from personal experience that this is not the case. I do not come from a wealthy family. I do not come from a family or any kind of environment where I was taught about finance, finances or investment or trading. Uh, you know, my entire family, I'm the only person in my family that works in the financial sector. And uh, and, and I didn't have a financial education when I was a youth, so none of this was part of my upbringing, but I worked hard. I worked my butt off to learn about investment, to learn about economics, to learn about trading, and to devise my own trading strategy and perfect it over time and take it seriously as an occupation, even when I wasn't doing it professionally. And that's the difference between the individuals who are going to cross the finish line and stay in this game. And to those of you guys who are out there, and I think those are the individuals that are watching this channel. Again, sometimes I make videos for newer newer viewers, and sometimes I make videos for uh, returning subscribers. This, this uh, tangent is going to fall more into that secondary category because I fully believe that if you take the advice and the lessons that I'm trying to teach very seriously in these videos that you are going to be able to cross the finish line with me. And if that happens, the only thing that I want is just shoot me an email. Just shoot me an email and let me know that, hey man, your videos were helpful. Everything that you taught me was helpful. I learned, I took the time, I developed my strategy. Uh, I worked closely with you guys. If you joined the premium trading group to learn more in depth and work with me one-on-one, -on -one how to develop your own trading strategy that will bring you real results. I just want an email. That's all I want. Just let me know that it was successful for you and that you're crossing the finish line, man. Because my goal with this channel is not to turn out professional traders. It's to turn out profitable professional traders. There is a big difference because there's a lot of people who attempt to go pro or do go pro, but they aren't able to cross the finish line. Why? Because they didn't put the time and effort into backtesting their strategy or developing their strategy in the first place. And when they actually get out there on the live field with real money, all those errors come up. You will be exposed if you do not put the time and energy into developing and building your strategy. Put the time in now if you haven't already. You have time. This is going to be an asset class that is tradable for the rest of the foreseeable future. It's not going anywhere. Cryptocurrency is not going anywhere. Put the time and effort in today for success tomorrow. Getting back to what we're talking about here. Uh, Craig Wright, huge joke of a human being. Uh, and not Satoshi, right? There's just, there's just no, 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 no chance in the world. Uh, listen, so just to comment on this real quick, Craig Wright claims that he can send Bitcoin from the original wallet, right? From wallets that are associated with Satoshi Nakamoto. 
if you were if you were Satoshi Nakamoto, you would just do that. OK, if you have a really easy way to prove that you're Satoshi Nakamoto and a really hard way to prove that you're Satoshi Nakamoto and you choose the really hard way, you're probably not Satoshi Nakamoto because it would just be so easy to prove that you were Satoshi. Just send the Bitcoin. That's all it takes. Just just send one Bitcoin. Send it somewhere. Send it to charity. It doesn't matter. But he doesn't. He's come up with all kinds of excuses, excuses of why he can't. He's come up with all these complicated ways. Uh, Roger Veer had had co-signed for this again. Roger Veer, the exact same person signing co-signing for Mount Gox right before it collapsed. Roger Veer, the man who has just completely been a fraud, uh, you know. And, and again, you want to give the man his due because he was that nice Bitcoin evangelist for a long time. Called him Bitcoin Jesus back in the day. This is before anybody really cared about Bitcoin. Uh, when you were just trying to spread the word and growth of adoption. But since then, the money corrupted his mind. He got in bed with Jihan Wu and things have just gone south from there. I digress. So Binance delisting BCH SV. Uh, when is the last day it's going to be trading? Uh, the 22nd of April. So you have until the 22nd of April to cash out your BCH SV or transfer it to another exchange where you will be able to trade your BCH SV. Uh, let's go over to... All right, BCH, ABC, BTC. Uh, let's go over here and look at what Bitcoin Cash did uh, right on the tails of that. Right on the tails of that, what do we see? Uh, we see uh, we see Bitcoin Cash absolutely exploding in price uh, on the tails of that announcement. It happened right here. Uh, and, and there you go, man. Uh, Bitcoin Cash absolutely uh, pushing up on the, on, the, on the tails of that announcement. However, then you have the fundamental money movement in the market and BCH continuing to fall on the way down. So, uh, this is going to have to be extrapolated over to BCH M19, but regardless, I digress. So this was an opportunity. Uh, this was the chart that we have been looking into for quite a while. So we did take the short tapping in the liquidity above resistance. So active position right there, BCH short. Moving on, we get into what I think was the fundamental leading indicator for this uh, price in Bitcoin's movement. Uh, so we got this on whale alerts. If you guys aren't following whale alerts on Twitter, I recommend that you do that. BitMEX rec and whale alerts are good leading indicators. Uh, it can be difficult to manage all of this data. So I am going to attempt to try and break this down. Now we can see a lot of whale alerts if we click out of here, for example, let's, let's just go up to the top. Uh, we can see whale alerts right here. So a thousand Bitcoin transferred from Poloniex to unknown wallet, 2000 Bitcoin transferred from Poloniex to unknown wallet, uh, 2080 Bitcoin transfer Poloniex, blah, 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 blah. So a lot of Bitcoin moving from Poloniex, taking advantage of arbitrage, or this is, uh, People would point to this as uh, signs of large, uh, long, la large scale accumulation. Uh, I don't think that's the case. I think this is arbitrage being taken taken advantage of. Uh, whenever you're seeing transfers from uh, uh, from known addresses to unknown wallets, typically that's not indicative of anything that's going to move the market. And you can speculate as to whether, oh, that's institutions buying up Bitcoin. It's not. Bitcoins are, are, are institutions have and will be buying Bitcoin OTC. Um, uh, they're not uh, institutions are not buying their Bitcoin on Poloniex. This is large scale arbitraging that is taking place. Um, but whenever you see something that's a little bit different like this, this is different. So 10 million USDT transfer from unknown wallet to Bitfinex, right? Why is $10 million being transferred from an unknown wallet to Bitfinex? Why? So that they can move the market, so that they can take advantage of some point in time or because this has been planned out. Either they're going to suppress price so they can buy cheap and push price up and take advantage of longs. So this is going to you're going to see this with order book spoofing, for example. So I would say that if you see a large amount of USDT transferred onto an exchange, especially Bitfinex, uh, because this is typically where we see this happen the most. If you see a large amount of, of USDT transferred into Bitfinex, right? Uh, the other uh, kind of jokingly speculation I said was, oh, well, somebody cashed out all their Bitcoin Cash SV and said, hey, hey, uh, 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 here you go. Here's your here's your chunk back. Uh, most likely not that. That's just some funny speculation that we were putting on this morning. Uh, but anyways, if you see a large amount of USDT being transferred to Bitfinex, and then you see order book spoofing. So you see, so you are seeing uh, buy orders flash on and off the market. This is enticing individuals into buying up liquidity. They're going to push price up uh, into ask orders that are not going to move. So whichever orders you see flashing on and off the market, that's typically the direction the price is going to go in, right? So if you see buy orders flashing on and off on BitMEX, this is a good leading indicator. Uh, and you see ask walls that aren't budging, typically price is going to move down. What does this mean? So from a market maker perspective, this is a little bit more advanced and somewhat a little bit more sinister, but this is just how it works in, in the pattern that I want you guys to see and be able to understand is that if you see large scale order book flashing to the buy side and you see price begin to move up, this is 
generally spoofing, enticing individuals to buy into price because they think the price is going to appreciate. However, those uh, those buy orders aren't really allowing themselves to be eaten up because they're they're saving their capital with limit sell orders or market sell orders that they're aggressively going to initiate when price has reached a certain level. They're going to let those resting asks get filled because the common way to think about this is, well, look at all these bids that are coming on the buy wall. We're going to keep going up. These asks are going to get chewed into. It's typically the wrong way to think about it. Whichever side of the order book you see being spoofed is often the way that price is likely to go. So those are two levels of confluence that you can use to try to predict which way the price is going to go. If you see a large amount of, and this is all, and this, and, and the order book spoofing it works regardless. But if you see that in conjunction with USDT, large deposits of USDT being put onto an exchange, especially an exchange where you can short sell on Bitfinex, BitMEX, Bybit, Deribit, uh, we generally aren't going to be covering Bybit or Deribit, for example. Uh, they're often not going to pop up here, but Bitfinex especially is one that is associated with large market movements. So, anyways. All right. So looking at the daily chart on Bitcoin right here, and of course the daily candle is not close to closing, so we cannot analyze it for our technical indicators, uh, but we're just going to look at this large scale price action here on the daily so we can look at our important critical levels. Again, nothing has changed since yesterday. Uh, this is exactly what I said in my video yesterday. We do have this bearish breaker that we traded into. We hit our first initial uh, limit sell order at 5170. I was talking about this particular trade uh, for those individuals that are attempting to scale into a short order. This bearish breaker, this up daily candle, this bullish daily candle uh, that was the last bullish candle before a significant shift in market structure does represent the area to be scaling into your shorts. Should we close the daily above the high of this bearish candle? And I talked about this in length yesterday, but I'll just revisit it today for the purposes of this video. There was a lot of aggressive initiation of selling at this point in time. This is where sellers entered the market in force and really showed their hand. If price pulls back to test their entry levels, their initiation levels, we would expect them to defend their positions quite strongly. And if they do not defend their positions, we can't take a trade based off what might happen. We know that the higher probability trade right now, the lower risk to reward setup is the short trade from that bearish order block, right? From that bearish breaker. Meaning you can take all revisits back into that trading zone to initiate your shorts. This is a level of the market where you're only looking for short entries and not long entries. We're not looking for long entries until we fall down to another critical level of support. So 49.69 already got tapped. We already talked about that. What is the next level that you could set limit buys at? 48.44 here on the BitMEX chart. That's the three-day key June. Falling down below that, you have your daily tanking and your horizontal level of support and resistance that we talked about prior. That is currently coming in around 46.91, 4700. That would be your next level below that. What's the next level to set limit buys below that? 45.03. These levels are only good once on the way down if you want to catch wicks. Sometimes you can play them multiple times if you're scalping on the lower time frames. You know, it's just, it just depends on what level uh, of, or excuse me, what time frame and how actively you want to trade. So, Anyways, uh, price did come up. We talked about the long scalp uh, that we entered on the second BitMEX account. Uh, that got filled at 49.50 on average. Profit was taken 51.30, 51.50. We were looking to potentially take profits above at 52, uh, 5200, 5220. We did not end up going that high, and the long scalp did get stopped out with the rest of our sm uh, the small amount, about 25%, uh, back at take profit one or break even, depending on how you structure the trade. Again, always, 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 when you hit your first profit target, you need to have at least one profit target on your chart. And at that profit target, you need to take profit and move your stop loss to break even. Because at that point on the chart, at that point in the trade, you can no longer lose money. It's impossible for you to lose money. You've already made some money because you've already pulled profit out and put your stop loss at break even. The only question left is how much money are you going to make? And this is a key factor uh, that really helps people, if, especially if you're unsure about, should I take profits? When should I take profits, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so anyways, uh, forcing yourself to take at least a portion of your profits at a predetermined level. And again, I've talked about this. What is the level? Average true range, whatever average true range is, uh, plus one from whatever your entry is. This works fantastic on the eight hour chart and on the daily. Um, that is when you want to take 50% of your profits. This is my personal strategy off the table and move your stop loss to break even. Uh, I, you, are, you are free. In fact, I encourage you to develop a good exit indicator or an exit system yourself, whether that be based on price action or whether that be based on technical indicators to tell you when you should be out of the market fully, right? You need a system that is going to tell you, hey, I've been in this trade for a while. I was looking to let my winner run. And now 
Uh, and now I need to be now now my indicator or my strategy is telling me to be out of the trade. You need something like that that you just take without question. Uh, for me, those are going to be that's going to be time transformation sell signals. So we did flash that sell signal right up here on this day right here, the 8th of April. We talked about this. We got that nice push up to tap into liquidity above these highs, actually touching the upper boundary or excuse me, the lower boundary of our larger resistance zone area up here, the area where I said I would be done looking to take any profit on any long orders and only be looking for shorts uh, between that area between 5700 and 6150. All right, and uh, we talked yesterday about the Fisher crossing below the zero line. This is a powerful trending indicator. When the Fisher crosses below the zero line, this is telling you that price is gearing up for a short trade. And as you can see here, although the daily hasn't closed, we are continuing to descend below the zero line. And what was really interesting is that this indicator printed on an up candle, right? We, we confirmed closing below the zero line while price was pushing up, something that I was telling everybody yesterday to be cautious of. Uh, so anyways, uh, next, just, just to repeat, next critical levels of support are going to be 4844, uh, 4844, 4700, 4690, and then 4503 getting below that. Uh, those are areas where the, the next, so, so in my analysis, the next area that I see price finding significant support is going to be at that $4,700 area. I feel that price can, uh, it is likely the price consolidates there for a while. Where are we going to find significant support? Uh, at that $4,400 area likely at that $4,400 area. But we'll keep you updated because again, when our three-day candles close, our levels change and we do have to update. So that's the thing. We're not going to say, we're not going to make blanket statements about which way price is likely to go. And currently right now, any retreats back into the bearish breaker are going to be opportunities to short. So we do have those entries scaling up. Now, should the daily close above the open of this candle right here, the close of this candle right here. So this, these levels right here, that level on the chart, excuse me, just to make sure I have this absolutely right, is going to be 53.21, uh, the open of this candle as well, 53.21. So congruent right there. That is going to be your that is going to be your indication that bears have completely abandoned their position, and we are likely going to test. Uh, we are likely going to push quite high into this zone right here. the The level that I've been throwing around is fifty eight hundred. Although you can be more conservative and use the upper boundary of the resistance zone here, fifty seven twenty one, fifty seven hundred because this will no longer be a raid. You don't clear liquidity multiple times. If the bears, you can see where the bears enter strong positions right here from the weekly Tenkin. If the bears enter into, uh, if the bears completely abandon their position, if sellers completely abandon their position and allow their orders to be absorbed, or, you know, again, they're likely taking profits or holding on for winners. It depends on the, on the personal psychology of the traders. Just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean you're a profitable trader. Just because you can move the market doesn't mean you're going to make profit off of moving the market. Now, nine out of 10 times they do, but it all depends on the individual that is actually trading the system. Um, and this is again, how you as a retail trader can take advantage of these movements in the market. So I digress. Um, I'm looking for revisits into the bearish breaker to be reinitiating shorts. Obviously, uh, for those for those that had not caught the the entry from from uh, excuse me. So for those who were not paying attention uh, when I talked about scaling into a short between 53.25 and 53.75 to get an average entry of 53.50, which is where I am at short on my main account. Um, then I was trying to provide an opportunity for those individuals to scale back in based off the bearish breaker. We did hit that first level right there. So depending on how you were scaling in, whether you were doing a 10, 20, 30, 40 or a 20, 30, 50, however you were looking to scale into your position, uh, you should be at least partially filled. So regardless of which way this goes, you've been in a profitable trade. And for those of you who took the long scalp that we also recommended, again, you were able to take profits on that at 5130, 5150. So now in continuing on with analyzing the lower time frames for profitable setups, I do want to point out a beautiful signal that our technical indicators did give us. So here we have time transformation on the hourly chart. What do we see here? Obviously, we have the zero line right here. And what do we see right on this candle right here? We get a continuation cross. Okay, this is a powerful signal. As I've talked about many times, some of the best signals that I get are continuation crosses on time transformation. And what's beautiful about this signal is that we also have confluence with the signal. Okay, so a continuation cross is when you have an oscillator, a centered oscillator that has two lines and that you can take signals off of based on whether or not that the, the lead line is above or below zero, right? So that is a trending indicator. So when price crosses below the zero line, that means we're entering into a bearish trend. You need confirmation though to take the trade. So keep that in mind as part of your strategy. And when we cross above zero, we are entering into a bullish trend, right? That is the traditional way to trade centered oscillators. Now, 
a continuation cross is a special kind of signal that you need a centered oscillator with two lines. Time transformation fits that bill. The MACD does as well. Time transformation is far superior, for example, but you can see this play out on the MACD. So for example, we have time transformation below zero. It crosses below zero right here, letting us know that we are in the negative wave aspect of this asset, right? Meaning that price as converted into a sine wave is in the negative aspect, is in this, the descending trough instead of the peak of its price. And so we expect that it, so it is far more likely for price to continue moving down. Why? Because we've entered into a bearish trend as indicated by our centered oscillator. However, we see, we see time transformation come up to test against the zero line and it rejects and crosses underneath the signal line, letting us know that we have a short sell on the table. Continuation crosses are powerful signals against some of the best trades that I've taken. So we've talked about this in the premium webinars uh, for the premium trading group as well. Crossing below zero, crossing above zero, very powerful signals to watch out for. So where do we get that signal? We get that signal on this candle right here. And what do we see Wada Atar doing on that very same candle? Wada Atar is showing bearish momentum and we have our volume bar trading above the explosion level, meaning that there is enough volume and volatility to take that trade. Uh, and beautifully, if you would have entered on the close of that candle, you'd have had a beautiful, 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 almost 3% trade right there on the table for you. You'd still be in great profit right now. Good low risk, good low risk trade. Good low risk trade guys. And again, using something like Quadrigo ATR to manage your risk. So we can see on that candle, what would have been our stop loss for a short 51.63. So managing risk fairly tightly here on the hourly chart, but a beautiful trade. Now, I also wanna point out what the Ichimoku is doing right here. The Ichimoku would have given you the short signal on this candle right here that you're currently seeing. Why? Because we are closing the hourly below the Kumo cloud. Now, again, I've talked about this at length because look at what price action is doing. We are near a level of support and we are getting long wicks to the downside. Lots of selling volume on these candles. Typically, you expect to see a resurgent bounce uh, from price action like this. And I've talked at length about how the traditional way that you're going to be taught to trade the Ichimoku is going to be entering into short signals when price closes outside of the cloud, closes below the cloud or closes above the cloud. I've talked about this at length. The same with, uh, same with the Tenkan and the Kijun crossing. Ichimoku is a powerful indicator that can give you fantastic signals and basically let you know what the market is going to be doing. But you want to understand the nuances of trading it on cryptocurrency. I would not take this breakdown Kumo cloud trade. I would not take this breakdown Kumo cloud trade until price retraced to reject from the Kijun or the Tenkan, right? So we're talking about a one and a half to a two and a half percent valuation before I would be looking to take that trade. You never wanna sell into support, which is another element here, and you never wanna take an early signal. I know that a lot of people would be looking at this hourly trade as an initiation to go short. Unfortunately, I've just, with, through my back testing and from trading at Chimoku for a long time, I do, I do know and I can tell you that Overall, you are going to get some great entries utilizing the strategy, just selling into the breakdown like that. However, um, the, great, the, the great majority of the time, price is going to retrace on you. And if you don't understand that, often you're going to think that this is a shift in market structure, that you got a bad signal. This all helps if you have a predetermined stop loss level and you understand what you're doing and you've taken time to back test this and just figure out what works best for you. So this is something that you would naturally discover on your own if you put in the time and patience to fully, fully back test this indicator. And I wanna, exp I, I, and I wanna talk about this at length because I get a lot of flack for talking really well about indicators or, or promoting indicators because I get, oh man, all you need is price action. Let's worship at the altar of price action. And I am still a price action trader. You guys know I talk about price action all the time. Liquidity grabs, bearish breakers, candlestick structure, of course, it is important. But as a beginner trader, you don't need that. You don't need to understand that. You need a system. And the problem with starting with price action is that it is subjective, okay? It's difficult to assign rules and values to price action, right? Because everybody is gonna teach you to trade price action a certain way. And for years and years and years, the best traders only promoted price action trading and people talked smack about indicators. They said that indicators are for noobs. You're gonna see this in the comment section on the videos, right? And you know, indicator trading is pleb trading. I've heard that one before, it's not. If you are a beginner trader or if you're unconfident in your situation, build an if this then that strategy. You can build an if this then that strategy around price action, but it is more difficult and not the path that I recommend 
for beginner traders. I recommend that you start with an indicator based if this, then that strategy. Why? Because it's much easier to backtest, it's much easier to quantify, and it's much easier to develop a set of rules that are going to allow you to profit at the end of the year. Then, when you are confident in your system, and I mean two years confident in your system, then you can begin incorporating price action and see through your backtesting if it would have given you better results. Sometimes it won't because there are fantastic strategies out there that are purely technical indicator based that will give you amazing results at the end of the year. It's about following a system and sticking to the rules of your system. So uh, looking for the Ichimoku cloud breakdown trade, I would be looking for retracements back to the Kijun or the Tenkan sign. We can see the Tenkan crossing down and we're about to get that bearish TK cross. So similarly with the Kumo cloud breakdown and the Ichimoku, or excuse me, and the Tenkan Kijun bearish cross, I'm always looking for a retracement to the zone of breakdown or to the lines, to the levels of the, of the Tenkan or the Kijun or to the bottom of the Kumo cloud for a retracement before I enter into that trade. Why? Because that allows me to manage my risk much more tightly. For example, Example. I want to see a rejection from the Kijun of the Tenkan, not a close above the Kijun or the baseline, right? So this allows me to manage risk quite well. Why? Because I'm looking for the hourly candle to retrace to the level of the Kijun, and I can in initiate a position on the test of the Kijun looking for a rejection. And if price closes above the Kijun, I mean, that is going to be a very small loss compared to entering into the trade here and saying, well, if price closes above the Kijun, I'll just go ahead and take that L. At the those percentages really matter. They really, really matter at the end of the year when you add up your wins and losses. So entering into the position at the right time is very important. All right, I wanna finish off today's analysis with talking about Ledger X. Now, Ledger X is attempting to be the first US firm to launch physically delivered and physically settled, excuse me, Bitcoin futures contracts. Now, the difference between physical delivery and again, the I mean, over the overwhelming majority of Bitcoin derivatives are cash settled, right? You have cash settled derivatives, you have cash settled futures, which is the majority of the money flowing through the markets. Whether you want to talk about COMEX, I could go on for a long time about this and the manipulation that occurs in cash settled markets, especially as it relates to precious metals and what we've seen over the last decade. Um, but uh, there is a difference between physically delivered futures contracts and cash settled futures contracts. So uh, when uh, when you are dealing with a physically delivered uh, futures contract, when the contract expires, you have to deliver the underlying asset, right? For example, so if you sell, if you short sell uh, a physically delivered contract, then when that term expires, you actually have to produce uh, what you have. So you actually have to have what you what you purport to have to sell it. So this is similar going to back. There's not going to be margin on back. See margin uh, backed is is attempting to be uh, backed is obviously the futures platform that uh, the Intercontinental Exchange is going to be launching. Um, they are not going to allow margin on their platform. The reason why is because they purport to they, they purport to say that we want to create a price discovery vehicle for Bitcoin's price, right? And so we understand, they seem to understand and know that utilizing cash settled futures contracts, something like the CME and what the CBOE was doing is just right for manipulation. Uh, again, if you guys go into the Discord, I posted a long imager post. I posted a lot of links that talked about this earlier today. Um, uh, make sure you guys go check that out. Discord.crackingcryptocurrency.com. It's in the general chat channel. You guys are, I, I highly invite you to come check that out and join the Discord if you're not in the Discord already. But uh, if we look, if we go and look, if we just look back in history and see what the uh, the the cash settled futures did to precious metals, they suppressed the price of precious metals. If you go back to the statements of the CME, when Bitcoin futures were launched, they said, we will tame Bitcoin. What happened to Bitcoin's price? It jumped from 15,000 to 19,000 and then crashed all the way down to 3,000. All right. This is, it's not a coincidence that Bitcoin cash settled futures contracts launched and price uh, and Bitcoin price was suppressed very similarly to how uh, gold and silver prices were suppressed. So if you go back and look at gold, gold reached an all-time high and then cash settled futures launched. And guess what? It took three and a half years for gold price to reach that level again. So whenever there is an asset class that is fundamentally valuable, like Bitcoin or like gold, and institutions don't get their claws in early enough, they typically almost always launch cash settled futures contracts. This has been the scam for the last 20 years, which suppresses price allows institutions to acquire positions, and then price surges. Guess what happens after that? 
generally ETFs launch close to the top of the market. Why? So that these institutions have somebody to sell it to, right? Have somebody to sell it to. So uh, there's been a lot of talk about the ETF. Um, and I have my own thoughts of when we will see the ETF. Uh, it, it, the ETF is going to act as a vehicle for individuals to uh, the ETF has the potential to act as a vehicle for institutional investors to sell to retail. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see when that actually ends up launching. So as far as futures derivatives platforms, I would I'm, I'm more supportive of Ledger X uh, going to launch this. Uh, they're going to be launching Bitcoin, Bitcoin options and Bitcoin features to retail customers as well through their new platform dubbed Omni. So uh, if we look, uh, they already have, it says on here, when we're talking about the regulatory roadmap that uh, that Ledger X is going to have to face, they're already registered with the CFTC. The, the CFTC has already granted Ledger X two licenses. Uh, they've already allowed the firm to act as a swap execution facility or an RSF, uh, which allows them to have their exchange platform and to, and to trade. And then they have their own clearinghouse, their derivatives clearinghouse organization, their DCO. Um, so this would just be an additional license on top of their existing permissions. And what I really think is important about this is that this service is going to be offered to retail investors as well, not just institutional investors. So we're going to be able to trade. Retail traders are going to be able to trade on a regulated exchange with a real price discovery that is physically delivered. All right. This is not going to be open to the manipulations of cash settle. Uh, the reason the cash settle can be easily manipulated is that we see this with Tether. This is no different from Tether and Bitfinex, really, uh, in my opinion, because you can just print lots and lots and lots of Tether. You can just print lots of fiat fake money and pump the price or suppress the price of any asset that you want because you don't actually have to own the underlying asset, right? You could short sell hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin, which is what we saw happen, and you don't need to own one Bitcoin. This allows this allows banks, hedge funds, uh, and, and just institutional investors to bet against Bitcoin's price, which is exactly what they did uh, back in December of 2017 without actually owning any of the underlying asset. You think any of them were hedged? They naked shorted the lot of that, right? We hear a lot about, you know, and again, there were other institutional investors that weren't in on the scam, of course, that probably uh, did hedge and did go about short selling something the correct way or the proper way. But uh, I digress. The point of the fact is, is that that is exactly what happened. We do see the launch of the CME futures coinciding with, with the massive decline of Bitcoin's price. It was no different with gold prices when the cash settle futures contracts for, um, for gold launched, and it wasn't any different for Bitcoin. So uh, very supportive of LedgerX attempting to go down this route. Uh, again, uh, I would like to hear you. I'm, I'm very interested to hear what your guys' comments on this are. What do you guys think between the correlation of CME futures and Bitcoin's price? What do you guys think about the correlation between a physically delivered Bitcoin futures contract that would allow price discovery in a regulatory fashion, or excuse me, in a regulated fashion, um, uh, that has act that retail that retail traders would have access to. So leave your comments down in the section down below. I'd be very excited to hear what you have to say. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this daily video. Thank you so much for your patience. The video tomorrow is going to come out a little bit later as I have some medical stuff to deal with with my family. I'm going to be uh, driving individuals to appointments that I've that I've uh, the promise to do. So again, looking forward to the video coming out tomorrow though. It'll just be a little later than normal. Uh, come Wednesday, guys, we will be back for our live stream. So only only one more day of pre-recorded, guys. I'm eager to get back into the live stream. I know a lot of people enjoy these pre-recorded sessions, but I love having the daily show and getting to interact with you guys. Uh, and we'll think about how we want to do this moving forward. So thank you guys so much for your support. If you guys... Uh, if you guys enjoy this content and appreciate the no-nonsense approach that we do attempt to bring here to trading cryptocurrency and trading in general, focusing on money management, uh, position size, and psychology, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel, hit the bell so that you never miss an episode because the YouTube algorithm doesn't seem to like us for some reason, and of course, give the video a like. Obviously, the like goal for this video is 100 likes, and if we achieve that goal, we will move the goal to 200 likes. So smash up that like, guys. We highly appreciate it. If you guys would like to trade more closely with us, if you like, if you'd like to get access to trade setups and signals from our team, uh, access to our indicators and strategies, our webinar series designed to teach you how to become a profitable trader and build your own if this then that strategy, as well as our private Discord community, you can of course check out the link at the top of the screen, premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com. I would love to help you more closely, guys. Until then, make sure that you trade safely, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.